Hi, today we're going to take a look at what I think is one of the most misunderstood and misused terms in all of engineering. We're going to look at the difference between voltage, power and energy because people mix these up all the time. Heck, I'm even guilty of it occasionally saying energy when I actually mean power or vice versa. And if you're not careful and you don't know exactly what you're talking about, you can sound like an absolute twit. And this is actually really important, not just in engineering, but in broader uh, when talking about technology because most a good lot of the world these days runs on electrical energy and we're always talking about solar and we're talking about energy production, energy consumption. It's you know, pretty much what makes the modern world go around. So it's important to understand the differences between these three words here. Let's get to it. So you should be familiar with voltage. It's simply the electrical potential difference. The potential difference between two different points. And you can have different sources of voltage. You can have a battery, for example. Uh, you can have a solar cell or some other junction type device like a thermocouple or a Peltier effect uh, device. Or you can have a generator where you've got a, uh, a wire through a moving magnetic field, for example. All sources of voltage. Now voltage isn't that easy. It can actually also be expressed and often is and probably more correctly so as the difference in electrical potential energy between two points. We've introduced the word energy. Does that mean voltage is the same of energy? No, it's not. That's the whole point of this video. So let's dig a bit deeper. Now, if you talk to a physicist, they'll tell you that voltage is energy per unit charge, and they're correct. Um, energy is in joules and charge is in coulombs, so you might have seen voltage equals J on C. It's a basic engineering, uh, electrical engineering and physics formula. But that doesn't mean that voltage is energy, because you can have voltage with practically no energy. How can you do that? Well, you might be familiar with uh, static electricity, for example. You rub your feet on the carpet and you generate a big charge and that can generate tens of thousands of volts. And you can discharge it, but you're not going to kill yourself or hurt yourself because there's practically no energy in that voltage. You could also say that the energy here is actually the potential energy, not the energy that we're going to talk about over here different thing. So uh, you can go into the physics of this until the cows come home and all the uh, you know physics experts will jump into the comments and no doubt you know try and explain things uh, better but you don't need to know that. Just suffice it to say that voltage is not energy and you can actually have voltage in the absence of energy essentially. Hmm, make sense? <laughs> Let's move on to power. Now, the unit of power is watts, as you most likely know, and uh, the power is equal to the voltage times the current. P equals V times I, basic Ohm's law stuff. Now, what you should understand in this uh, context of power is power is instantaneous. Power is the amount of power dissipated at that one instant in time. Or is it? Hmm, here's where we kind of dig a bit deeper like we did on voltage. So having just said that power in watts is instantaneous, I now have to tell you that watts is actually defined as joules per second, or the rate of energy uh, produced per second, or the rate of energy dissipated per second, for example. So there is a time component to that, that per second, the joules per second component. But as you'll see, it's still not the same as energy. Power is very different from energy. So we want to get at, once, and trust me, once we get through the detail here, I'll then explain the overall concept difference between power and energy. We're getting there. But suffice it to say that in engineering, in electrical engineering, in power terms, either circuit theory or uh, power generation or something like that, power is instantaneous, even though it is the rate of energy per second. So you know, you've got to have a current flowing to produce power. That's why if you've got no current flowing, then you have no power, even though you might have a high voltage. But in terms of electrical energy, circuit theory, energy production, all that sort of thing, when you're talking about power, you're talking about the power that's dissipated in the circuit once current starts flowing, because P equals V times I. If 
current doesn't flow if you have a circuit like this with a battery and a resistor if your switch is open no current flows you've still got your voltage your voltage here is still being generated that potential energy is still there but no currents flowing therefore no power is being dissipated in this load or no power is being consumed from the battery so although technically a watts actually power has that seconds component in it so it's only for electrical flow in terms of uh, actually talking about power you can uh, basically assume that it's instantaneous that's the best way to look at it it is the power dissipated or consumed or generated at that particular moment in time now let's take a look at energy energy in the electrical engineering world is the usage of power watts over time so it's uh derived units uh kilowatt hours watt hours could be watt seconds whatever combination you want so the energy equals power times time it goes back to how i said you can think of power as being instantaneous whereas energy is power over time that's the main difference and it's a huge fundamental difference now here's the big takeaway from this. You can generate power, but you can't generate energy. And vice versa, you can't store power, but you can store energy. So it's incorrect to say that this battery stores power. You can't store power. It can generate power by creating a circuit and having the current flow, but it's, it stores energy not power and that's a huge mistake a lot of people make and you will like often you'll just slip up even though if you know the difference you might say energy instead of power or vice versa sometimes but you know if you're trying to be serious and explain things to people you need to get the terminology right power is not energy it's very different let's take the example of a familiar home solar power system you might have say a three kilowatt power system it can generate three kilowatts of power in ideal sun for example that's what it's rated at that's its power rating in watts three kilowatts three thousand watts but you can't then go and say well my house consumed ten thousand watts of power today that that's ridiculous it's meaningless because you've introduced a the time element of a in this case a day 24 hours it's how much power that you take or use from your solar power system over a day or an hour because uh, you're charged on your electricity bill you're charged for energy you're not charged for power you're charged in kilowatt hours you might pay 10 or 20 cents per kilowatt hour over time and that is the big difference you're not paying for power you're paying for how much power you consume per unit of time so you don't want to go and say, well, my home has a three kilowatt hour solar system. <laughs> you sound like an idiot. Now let's take the D-cell alkaline battery again as a real good example and see the difference between voltage, power and energy here. A D-cell alkaline battery generates a nominal uh, electrical potential difference of 1.5 volts. That'll obviously drop when it uh, discharges, but let's say 1.5 volts. And what power can this generate well what power can this deliver to a load well that actually depends on the internal resistance the battery you've got to get into the electrochemistry and all that sort of jazz and you know I, i'm not gonna give you an answer but suffice it to say there will be a maximum power point google that one where there, there will be depending upon the load resistance and the internal resistance of the battery that when the load is equal to the uh, esr that will be the maximum amount of power that this thing can deliver the instantaneous power now the energy the amount of energy stored in this battery there is no power stored in this battery you remember you can't store power but you can store energy so there's energy in here and it has a nominal rating of approximately 25 watt hours for a, a typical d cell alkaline battery like this now you might see the more familiar you know milliamp hour figure of say 18,000 for an alkaline d cell that's actually strictly incorrect because energy is watts 
per you know, power per time, power in watts. So if you're talking in terms of milliamps, you're not actually correct. And that's why, say, take your mobile phone battery, for example, it might have the watt hour figure printed on there. It might say it's five watt hours, and that is the correct energy capacity because it's taking into account the drop in voltage because the voltage is not constant and then suddenly dies, it tapers off. So it's more correct, in fact, it's 100% correct to say, to give a watt hour energy storage figure in a battery. So with a 25 watt hour capacity battery, it could potentially deliver 25 watts for an hour or one watt for 25 hours. Simple. So I hope you found that interesting and useful, the difference between voltage, power, and energy. Uh, the most common misconception, of course, is the difference between power and energy. One is instantaneous, one is a measurement over time. And just keep in mind these facts about our storage and non-storage and generation and non-generation. But you know, some people will make the ridiculous claim that this has 1.5 volts of energy or 1.5 volts of power. It's like, oh, no. And that's what actually prompted this video. I actually uh, saw a video of a student actually uh, say, well, how much energy can a particular system that he was measuring actually produce? And the answer was 0.2 volts. Like, no. Oh. So what we'll do now is just quickly go to the bench and I'll show you an example of energy measurement. Now let me give you a quick, a practical example of the difference between power and energy. I've got my Gossen MetraHit Energy Multimeter here. It can measure power and energy. I've got a, uh, just a 5 volt power supply hooked up to my dummy load here. So I've got 5 volts into a constant current 1 amp load. So voltage times current, 5 volts times 1 amp is of course 5 watts. That's our power. That's our instantaneous power at this moment in time. If I switch to say four volts, uh, for example, then we'd get four watts. So there is no time component to this. We're just reading out that instantaneous five watt value. Now, if I switch into energy mode by pushing the function button and I reset the timer, you'll notice that we now have a timer in there counting from zero and you'll notice that the units have changed from watts to milliwatt hours or watt hours basically. So you can see it accumulating over time based on how much time we're running. And this is exactly how the energy in your home is metered, for example, in kilowatt hours. So we've got an accumulation of power over time. It gives us energy. And of course, the rate of this uh, accumulation is going to depend on the instantaneous val value of the power at that point in time. So if we switch down to say, uh, back down to three volts instead of five, it's still building up, but it's building up slower. If we go down to uh, two volts, it'll go slower again. And of course, if we switch back, our time is still accumulating in the background, but our instantaneous power in watts is five watts but our energy is slowly building up over time. There you go, nice practical example. And we can also do the example of battery capacity using the BK Precision 8601 electronic load here, which has a battery capacity uh, discharge function. Now, if we select the type of load, which is constant current, okay, if we set that to one amp, then we can actually trigger our, oh, go into our battery mode here. Let's say our stop voltage, whatever. Okay, we set our time and then we start it. You can see that once we start accumulating over time, we've got five volts, it's drawing one amp from the battery. Say, say we've got a five volt battery and it's drawing one amp here. You can see that the units are amp hours. It's not watt hours, it's amp hours because we're actually measuring a constant current load. And you can see that it accumulates, that amp hour capacity figure accumulates over time, but note, that this is not an energy capacity. It's purely a amp hour capacity because it's not taking into account the voltage at all. If you want that, if you want uh, an energy capacity of a battery, you have to choose constant wattage. Now, if you're still having a little bit of trouble understanding this, let's try the standard water analogy for electrical uh, circuits. The height of this dam here, we have a very nice looking dam, it's Kerr Dam by the way, in case you want to know, the height of the dam like this, this is equivalent to the voltage due to the pressure given by the height of the dam. Now, the water flowing out here like this, the rate of flow of the water is 
the power. And if you actually narrow that gate there and control the amount of water flowing out, that's actually the current. But let's not go there, shall we? And you guessed it, the volume of water in the dam here is the energy. Get it? So this is why you can close off the gate to the dam here and have no water flowing, no power, no current at all, but you have got the energy in the dam. And you obviously can't store a rate of flow of water. You can't store power, but you can store energy. You can fill this dam up. You can, the dam is like a rechargeable battery. You can fill it up and store energy in there, but you can't store the power like this. Get it? Hope that's clear. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss it down below. Catch you next time.